This particular presentation is a preliminary presentation of the full data set for Cohorts 1 and 2 um, with a, a mention of the first part of, of Cohort 3 where the first three patients in Cohort 3 were treated without, a, without DLTs. So the, uh, we started off with Cohort 1 at slightly lower doses of both drugs. Cohort 2 went to full doses of docetaxel with still a lower dose of abiraterone. And those are the two cohorts that are being fully presented here. And then um, we've finished now the, the study, and that will be submitted to the, the main ASCO. Uh, but cohort three was full doses of, of, of both drugs. Um, and basically what I can tell you is that it was, it was deemed that at least fully in cohorts one and two, there was no, um, no DLTs that we, that we didn't uh, really expect safe. I'll talk about preliminary efficacy data in a second, uh, but also the, the PK data that were fairly rigorous. So we did full PK of each drug alone and then looked at it in combination. So we did full PK of docetaxel alone in the patient, then we did abiraterone alone in that patient, and then we did the combination in, in each individual patient, and uh, we saw no significant differences um, with the combination. In terms of efficacy, the combination, uh, you know, I think is interesting for, for several reasons. One is that the there's at least some theory that the, the two mechanism as, of actions of the two drugs might be similar in, in targeting the AR pathway, at least generically. Certainly abiraterone, that's true, um, and possibly docetaxel. Um, and then more recently, we didn't know this at the time of the study design, but more recently with the ECOG data looking at earlier chemotherapy as having a, a longer term benefit in overall survival also, I think, re-brings docetaxel back into an, an earlier early setting. Uh, what we saw preliminary in terms of the, uh, the efficacy is that by the traditional 50% decrease in PSA rate as having a response, it was 100%. All, every single patient had a decrease of at least 50%. And most, it was 80%, had at least a 90% decrease in, in PSA at, at some period of time. Now, we, we see decreases in PSA with each drug alone, but each drug alone, typically, there's a fraction one in five or so that will be what we call primary factory, have no, no PSA decrease, just a, an upward continued trend, and we didn't see that in at least the small number of patients that we looked at.